Hello everybody, I hope you're doing okay. Now this video is really for students in year 11 and year 13 who would have done their real exams this summer, as well as I suppose some year 12 students doing AS level or even year 10 students who maybe were going to be entered for GCSE early. Now you can find all of this guidance on the Ofqual website. Basically Ofqual are the people that the exam boards were, um, kind of uh, get their guidance from. So OCR, Edexcel, AQA, whichever exam board you're doing, there's a lot of guidance that Ofqual put out to the exam boards. Now this is aimed at teachers, students, parents and carers, and at the moment your teachers are doing a huge amount of work to get you the best grades possible. And it's not an easy task, it's almost an impossible job. But what I thought I'd do is I'd go through this and bring up uh, some of the questions that loads of students have been asking me. And this is because if you would have had exams in 2020, your grade that you're awarded is based on an assessment of the grade that you would likely have achieved if the exams had gone ahead. So I'm really going to be talking about GCSEs and A-levels in this video. So basically, the grade that you will receive in the summer um, is based on what your school and college, uh, and therefore your teachers, think you would have got, based on their expertise and their experience. Now this includes things like mock exams, but your grade is not just based on one mock exam paper. It's based on maybe, um, you know, the fact that the teachers know you. They know how you get on in class. So it might be the quality of your books. It might be the questions you've answered in class. It might be any results of homework. And it's not just based on one thing. So if you did badly in your November mock exams, perhaps, that doesn't mean you will definitely get a bad result this summer. And it's based on the fact that your teachers have got a lot of experience of teaching students. And also they will talk about you amongst their colleagues. So there's not going to be people doing this individually. There might be grades for the whole of your year group decided by the whole science department at your school. And really in this video, I'm talking about science. Now, at some point after May, so um, June, July time, probably June, the, your school will submit to the exam board the grade that they think you are most likely to get. And this is based on work you've done previously. And this is important. There's no requirement for the school to be setting you additional work, or even if you had coursework you hadn't completed, there is no requirement for you to be doing that, because this is based on how you got on up until the school shut. And because the, the reason for that is that now, with school shutting and a completely, you know, unimaginable situation with a pandemic and the support at home not being what it was, it would be unfair to base your grades on the work that you've done since the schools have shut. And what the schools are going to do is they're going to basically provide a list to the exam boards saying what grade you probably would have got and also where you rank within that. So, for example, if you're a grade seven student, are you at the top of grade sevens or are you at the bottom? As in, are you a grade seven who could go up to a grade eight or are you a grade seven who might potentially go down to a grade six? And the schools don't need to provide any supporting evidence for this, but obviously your schools will still have probably your mock exams, they'll have records of marking and things like that. But they don't need to be providing lots of extra stuff to the exam boards. And what happens then is the exam boards take the marks from your school and all the schools in the country, and they therefore standardise the judgments once the grades have been submitted. And that's going to take into account the thing, you know, things like, for example, how your school did last year. If last year loads of people at your school were getting really high results, then that means it's probably going to be similar to that this year. Obviously, the danger is that everybody gets put in for a grade 9 or a grade 7, and that means nobody's going to be getting the lower grades. So what they're going to look at is all the results in the country and think, OK, what looks about right? What looks fair? And this is something here that you don't have to worry about. There's nothing you can do now to influence your teachers. There's nothing you can do to influence the standardisation. Basically, whatever's happened is happened. But there's a lot of clever people, a lot of them are teachers, and they've all got your best interests at heart, trying to be fair in the grades which are awarded. And here's something which is really important. Will you see the grade that your school submitted for you? No. Your schools, your teachers, are not allowed to tell you what grade you've been put forward for. And the reason for this is that um, they might say, well, we put you in for a five and then you might get given a grade four and then you'd feel, you know, that's not a great feeling to know that your teachers put you in for something higher and you got something lower. Equally, it's to stop parents and other people pressurising teachers to give you an inflated grade over what you would have got otherwise. So your teachers 
can't tell your parents or you what grade they put you in for. And the results are going to be published as normal in August. So A level is in the 13th of August, 20th of August for GCSEs, which means that you can then have your grades for the next step. So it might be you've got your GCSE grades that you need to get to college. It might be A level grades that you need to get to university. And something else down here, um, if you there is the option to take your exams again in the autumn or summer 2021. And basically, whichever grade is higher, you get to keep. Now, for some of you, you might be really pleased that your some of your GCSE or A-levels have been uh, cancelled, and you might be very happy with the result that you're given. Some of you are going to feel, you know, quite justifiably that you could have done better if you just had the chance. And that means um, the details haven't been released yet about... Um, uh, the dates of this or anything like that, but there is going to be an exam series in the autumn. And even if you're doing A-levels, you could still resit some of your GCSEs. Even if you're going to university, there's still the option to perhaps resit some of your A-levels. Okay, and again, if you're not happy about that, you could also have a go at doing it in 2021. And whichever is the highest grade is the one that counts and you can put on your CV in the future. For individual uh, private students and private candidates, um, this is something which I'm not sure about. Now, some of you, if you've been homeschooled, there's no teacher there to actually put a grade forward for you. Some individual private candidates might have already been working in the school and the teacher knows that person, so their grades can get submitted. But at the moment, um, it's not necessarily possible for individual private candidates or maybe mature students to get given a grade, especially if they haven't um, been doing any kind of mock exams in a centre who can actually put the stuff in for them. If you're in year 10 and 11, um, what's going to happen about the fact that you've missed a whole summer term of teaching? Is that going to do it? You know, what's going to happen to the exams in 2021 for you guys? Are the GCSEs going to be later in the year so there's more time at school for teaching? Are they going to take bits of the curriculum out? We don't know. And at the moment, it's too soon to say what level of impact this might be. So if you're in year 10 and year 11, just plan for it being like a normal GCSE and if you can, do as much work as you can at home at the moment. OK, um, I suppose the other bits in this are the autumn exams. They're still developing the details. You can take exams in all the subjects or just a few of them. Who pays for that exam? Well, it says here fees are payable by centres for students enrolled in schools or college. So I'd have thought that if you're in year 11 at the moment and you want to have a, go, a retake at that exam, then your school that you were in year 11 in should be the ones paying. But I think that's going to depend on the individual schools. And um, when you get these autumn grades, they should be released before Christmas. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. If you want to uh, read all of this, you can find the document on the website. The take home points for me, though, are that, you know, this is something that nobody ever predicted. And at the moment, your teachers are doing the best they can to protect you and put in the highest possible grade that they think you are likely to have achieved. Um, they can't tell you what grade it is. And once they've submitted those grades, there's a whole other level of standardisation and mark adjusting going on by the different exam boards, all overseen by Ofqual. So effectively, broadly, the marks this year will be quite similar to the marks awarded last year for GCSEs and A-level. So I hope whatever's happening at the moment, that maybe helps you. I'm not sure. I hope that reassures you that um, people are doing what they can for you. And if you're really not happy, you can always do the exams again in the autumn or summer 2021. And again, I've got videos to help you if you're wanting to do retakes, um, as well as all the other support that you've seen I've been putting out there for physics in general. So until then, uh, take care and I hope you're okay. Thank you.